The Portland Rose Festival has officially begun, and the weather is perfect to hit the waterfront this weekend. That's right. That's where City Fair kicked off tonight. Fox 12's Jeffrey Lindblom has a look at the sights, sounds, and flavors it has to offer. It's a nice day. It's the start of the weekend, and there's a City Fair. All right, am I good to go? Sweet. So, if you're under the impression that would be a recipe for a lot of people to slide their way down here, then you'd be right. In fact, I'd go as far to say, you hit the nail on the head. Awesome. We always have a good time, but the weather makes it ten times better this year. Last year, we were mopping in the mud. It's really fun. The spirit here at the 2023 City Fair can be easily summed up in the words of young Alec. It's good. What do you like about it so much, Alec? What's well, your favorite part? It makes my hat spin. <laughs> Aside from that, though, people can be found dancing to live music or playing the games that sit around just about every corner. The chance to win something like this little boy, stuffed animal a few times his size. Or another chance to watch dangerous stunts, perhaps performed by this barefoot juggling fella standing on machetes. All in good fun and paired with some equally as good food. Yo, so, oh, family, I drink, I ate three pieces of pizza this morning and four drinks. Drink so I hope I don't throw up. And there's a lot to choose from in that department, from rides that spin around and around or others that flip upside down. It makes me go totally crazy, and I like that, like, a lot. Totally crazy, a common desire among thrill seekers. They're just exciting. Scary and fun at the same time. The adrenaline. <laughs> now, though there's dozens of rides, some have their sights set on their favorites. The Haunted Mansion was uh, requested. <laughs> it was scary. Surprising, and I, I just like getting like surprised. Oh, oh. But no matter how tall, I'm told fears are better conquered in good company. Probably hanging out with friends. In my best friend Blue. Among friends and the crowds, it appears this fair is suitable for all ages. The weather's perfect, and I'm just taking it slow and easy. All right. Julia, however, isn't taking it easy. Yeah, you know, like my other grandson said, he goes, "You're a young old." person, Grandma. <laughs> She's braving the ball pit alongside her grandson. It's a lot slipperier than it looks. A little unsteady on the feet when you're going stepping on balls. She's making memories <laughs> like many others. Some sure to capture the moment snapping photos. We work a lot and so oh. to make these memories and have uh, times that we can look back on and, and just enjoy. The fair will continue for the next several weekends, so don't strike out and miss your opportunity to come by. Reporting from downtown Portland, I'm Jeffrey Lindblom for Fox 12 Oregon. Wow, yeah. that was impressive. I don't know if I had more fun, the people in the story, or Jeffrey. I know, he's got talent, yeah. I have to say that. That was great. <laughs> well, the Rose Festival's opening night ended with a bang. Yeah, the grand finale was a fireworks show, and we've gotten to know the people behind the massive display. It turns out the show was designed by several generations of a local family, and we spoke with them earlier this month. It's on a, on a river, and, and you... You're loading in on barges, and you're dealing with well, the harbor master and the coast guard and the state of Oregon, and a little nerve-wracking at times. But it's cool to learn from the best of the best. A lot goes into it. If you'd like to see our full look behind the scenes at the Rose Festival's fireworks show, just go to kptv.com and click the As Seen On section. Here's a live look outside now from our Mary Hill Winery Tasting Room and Bistro Camera. Still nice out there. Fox 12's Chief Meteorologist Mark Nelson here now. He was out there having all that fun earlier today. I did have a lot of fun. I had uh, about half of a corn dog. Mm -hmm. It was a 10-inch corn dog. I wasn't going to eat it. It's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Big corn and, dog. Then, uh, and then I had the elephant ear. And wow. then I had water. Very exciting. You needed water out there today, probably. Yeah, talked to lots of cute kids. Oh, my gosh, it was really fun. So uh, Memorial Day weekend, now I put the suit on and, you know, back to normal here. So Memorial Day weekend, it can be very wet in Portland. If you've lived here long, you know that. Some Memorial Day weekends are nice, like this one is going to be and is now. Others are like, eh, like last year where it wasn't so great. In fact, we've had some record-setting weekends. I remember this one back in 2008. Thunderstorms sat over PDX at the airport. Wettest one hour we've ever seen in the month of May, almost an inch of rain. We don't tend to get, notice in our climate, we tend to get a gentle rain most of the time. And then just four years later, same Memorial Day weekend, wettest one hour in May again, we had over an inch of rain, and both of those were pretty close to the all-time record of one hour, uh, one hour rainfall, which I think is like 1.1 inches, something like that. And then we had record rainfall just what, the next 
year in 2013, so we had quite a few wet ones. Lately, we've had some drier ones, and in fact, this should be a dry weekend, except here's our dry streak forecast. Notice tomorrow we say it could be dry tomorrow. Most likely, it's going to be dry tomorrow, but I just want to say uh, you shouldn't have anything outside tonight because there could be a shower tomorrow morning. After that, dry Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and probably into next weekend as well, which, of course, that's the Starlight Parade. Riel, you and I will be out there and with Shauna. So we're thinking, looking farther ahead, we think right now most likely it'll just be mild next weekend as well. Well, I sure hope so. Hope for that. Uh, Fox 12 is partnering with Fred Meyer for a special hunger-free campaign during the month of May. The Oregon Food Bank says this time of year the need is the greatest, but you can help. When you get to the checkout line at your local Fred Meyer, all you have to do is say you'd like to donate a $10 virtual bag of food. The Oregon Food Bank says those bags will help countless families in the coming months. You can learn more about the campaign on our website, kptv.com slash hungerfreeproject. Still ahead, a local high school athlete has the need for speed. Coming up in tonight's high school spotlight, we'll introduce you to one of the fastest.